What double standard disgusts you? If you always arrive to work late you're in big trouble. If work never finishes on time, shrug, no big deal. I offered to work extra hours in a salaried position to get the company over a hurdle if they'd do the honorable thing and comp me hour for hour for my trouble. Outright refused, because you were salaried, even though my giving up a few weekends would make a huge difference for their bottom line. So when they tried the extra hours mandatory free overtime thing later I told them to piss up a rope. Right now in Canada. We're in strict lockdown but a dozen of our politicians have been found vacationing around the globe. In other words, we can't bury grandma at a funeral, but these politicians can go work their turn. Thankfully, many of them have resigned in the last two weeks. In America the politicians can barely get the words out of their mouth by the time they are breaking the rules. None of them ever resign either. Hell. In California a city councilwoman literally voted to ban indoor dining and then immediately went out to eat following the vote. Here in Denver the mayor made a statement about staying home for Thanksgiving from the Fine airport. When I leave a job, I'm generally expected to give two weeks notice so the company isn't left without essential things being done. When a company decides to let me go though, no warning to start putting in applications or saving more money, you're just gone. Total horse Not in countries like Germany, it's harder for the company to get rid of you than you leaving. Similar in Australia, they need to give notice, I think I had one where it was one month notice, but they got around it by just paying me for the month and not having me come in as I could have been a security risk if I was disgruntled, certainly didn't mind being paid for a month to not come to work. The employee should give two weeks notice. Anything else is unprofessional, but the employer will actively obscure their intentions until the very last minute. I trained my replacement once, who had been introduced to me as my assistant, so obviously I wanted to teach them the job properly. I came into work after my weekend and was called over by my boss and told that my assistant had transitioned into my position and thank you for helping the me's into the role. I was in this scenario as the transitioned assistant not knowing what was going to happen to the awesome woman who trained me. When I was able to quit the job I walked in one morning and just left the keys on the desk. I was the only person who knew how to do multiple things, but fully felt they deserved nothing more. Holy sh that's evil. I was looking to move up at one workplace, so I figured out how to very effectively automate some of the more rote aspects of my job. I then went to my bosses and showed them how I just freed up about 30% of my time, which I told them I was looking forward to filling with some extra projects, whether it was something of their choosing, or with something similar to Google Time that Google employees use to work on interesting ideas. Nope, they canned me and happily took my automation and hired someone with a lot less experience for about $30 care less. It was incredibly demoralizing in so many ways. F those people straight to hell. Bruh same exact thing happened to me. To make matters worse our CEO had everybody in the office working double their normal hours to hit a really important deadline that week. We all busted and barely made the deadline. Then he laid us all off the next fine day. I'm done with this one entirely. A few employers I've given two weeks notice they've tried to cut it short and screw me out of a paycheck. The last one walked people out the door. Routinely. The day of. Despite the notice and they had the audacity to tell me I was unprofessional. Like why would I give you notice? You haven't respected it when a single one of my colleagues did. Just complete lack of perspective. My last job would actively try to fire you if you put in your notice and they'd make sure you wouldn't be eligible for unemployment or rehire when they did. Bastards. I've done this before. I gave them about 10 day notice as I needed to start a new job. The manager goes I'm blacklisting you from applying to the company for 3 years for not giving 2 weeks. Well then I guess her response solidified my decision to leave so I ended up telling her that I'm using the remainder of my vacation from the next day until my last day. That didn't go well. I had a part time job as a barista at Starbucks for about 18 months. It was the only way to keep our family's ETH insurance and not go bankrupt after a catastrophic injury situation. Starbucks offers really good insurance for people who work 20 HRS week. I was 50 years old. I had two degrees and a bunch of experience. But I couldn't work full time. When things had finally settled down enough that I could work full time again. I got two job offers and both of them wanted me to start right away. Why a why? Normal life. I was very happy. I told my manager to take me off the schedule. She was very pissed. Like. 
How dare you cause me all this trouble. Now I have to redo the schedule. She told me I'd better not jump ship like this. Or she wouldn't give me a good reference. I actually smiled at her. Honey. Do you think I'm ever going to admit that I actually worked here? Eater. On the flip side. I had an employer who brought my entire team into the conference room. Pretending it was for a meeting. And informed everyone that we were terminated effective immediately. They collected the work laptops and then escorted each person to their desk. Had somebody standing there watching while we packed up. And within half an hour we were all in the parking lot. Unemployed. Kinda like that scene in succession. There really is a big double standard here. There are only two reasons to give your employer any notice. You like the people you work with and don't want them to be inconvenienced by your sudden leave. You already have an offer from a new company and are giving your current employer the opportunity to make a counter offer to keep you around. The company itself doesn't care about you past your potential to generate income for it. You should return the sentiment. You want to use your employer as a reference. If you work in a field where you may end up working with that manager owner again at a different company. Happens a lot in it. You don't want to burn bridges. Business should do whatever it takes to get ahead. But if the employee tries to make their life better, or find a new job, they are lazy and ungrateful. Recently on here there was a thread about employers hiding the pay for a posted position. Most people hated it as it was a waste of time to get to the point where they are willing to tell you the pay and it's an insulting amount. A few people were defending it. One guy said that it only makes sense for the employer to hide this from you and try to manipulate you about pay. From the employer's point of view they need to pay you as little as possible and if they post a salary then people who want more than that will not apply. So no chance to underpay someone who is worth more. And they will have to deal with people who aren't good enough for that. Mika. Salary. So according to this guy. Really. It's for the best that they try to screw you with hidden a salary for job postings. He's saying this as if we're supposed to just agree with it and not stand up for ourselves and just bend over and take it. But us demanding to know the salary during the first contact about a job? Unacceptable. How dare we try to interfere with the company trying to screw us? What makes that even worse is it isn't even good for the company. It isn't like people do the interview on their free time. Everyone involved is wasting time. That costs money. Further. Training people up and having them leave is a huge money sink for companies. I worked at a place that would intentionally hire people out of college and lowball them because the new hires didn't know any better. And then they would act shocked when those people would leave after 6 months of training to take a job making twice as much with the skills. I remember listening to a manager say that we were just losing money training these guys. And how they were so ungrateful. One of our senior guys was like, wait, you're paying them what? Well then I'm your problem. I'm the one telling them what they should be making in this industry. Can't really be mad at the kids for finding out you use their ignorance against them. The awkward enraged silence that followed was priceless. If I wake up at 4pm and go to bed at 9am. I'm lazy. Do nothing all day. Etc. Wake up at 4am. Bed at 9. You're seen as a responsible member of society. Doesn't matter if you work the exact same number of hours, make the same money, do the exact amount of housework. This is one of those sought by controversial posts. Child predators. Both men and women should receive the same charges. Cigarette butts. They're not biodegradable and it's a fire hazard. We have issues with coffee cups, plastic bottles, etc. But we're totally fine with cigarette butts. If you're a smoker, make sure it only hurts you and nobody else. I just don't understand why smokers feel it's okay to leave their butts on the ground, toss them out the window, and so on. They'll be within 10 feet of a trash can and still just litter. Why is this acceptable? Probably a bit late and will get buried. But the one that probably affects me the most directly is that idea that if I have my kids out with me alone, I'm either some miracle from the heavens doing God's work, a stranger actually said that to me, or hearing the or what is it dad is data babysit, f you Karen I'm the stay at home parent and it's not babysitting when they're my fine kids, mr, mom came out in 1983 and I still can't get a break about it. Wealthy people don't seem to be accountable for white collar crimes like poor people who commit petty crimes. Wealthy people get huge tax breaks and can spend more money on themselves or invest to make even more. 
investments are taxed at lower rates so people that can afford to invest make even more. Meanwhile those at the bottom get no wage adjustments for inflation while the cost of everything else increases from inflation. Benefits and pensions are cut so the wealthy get rich from the profits as a result of lower pay and benefits. Corporations can move to tax-sheltered countries to avoid paying more taxes. The average person gets none of this and is paying more out of pocket. Look at Bernie Madoff who went four years stealing other people's money and no prosecutions from the 2008 financial crisis. I guess it's easier to go after the poor, powerless and weak. I was at the park working out a few years ago and on a bench was a couple arguing. The girl proceeds to slap the crap out of her boyfriend. She then goes for another. But the dude blocked her and held her wrist. The girl then burst into tears and questions why he hurt her like that. To myself I was thinking. Wait you can hit him but when he defends himself it's wrong. Like WTF. I wish I could spend one day talking to my mother the way she talks to me. Sniping at her over every mistake. Shouting her name from across the house and expecting her to drop everything and come talk to me. Dismissing anything she says that I don't agree with by just saying no with no actual argument and expecting her to drop it. Me. Logical argument with facts. Mom. Well no because I said so. Me. Mom can I please have some choco milk? Mom. I don't want to fight with you. Well. I know it might sound like a far off dream. But one day you will move out. One day you will have your own place. When that day comes. You absolutely can do that. If she complains. Tell her whelp, I learned it from you and you're under my roof now, so deal with it or leave. Men vs women. Guys as untrustworthy, skeevy characters around children. There was a guy who posted a while ago who portrayed my point exactly, about his experience being a teacher in infant school or something can't remember exactly but the kids were pretty young. He loved being a teacher to help them, give them a good future, and watching them learn and develop into smart kids. However, there were a couple of occasions he got pulled aside by the head teacher for being inappropriate. One of them being, taking a young girl to the classroom nurse's office and giving her some antiseptic cream and plaster for her scrapes, since she fell over in the playground. Purely because he was a guy he was told parents might feel uncomfortable about that by his own head teacher, like leaving a crying, bleeding kid in the playground was a more appropriate idea than her own teacher helping. It's usually the instructions that the male teachers are given in school to not have any sort of physical contact with any female student so cases like the one you mentioned have become commonplace. If a female student gets injured and the teacher has to wait until a female teacher or other female student comes in to help. All he can do is watch and verbally comfort the student but he cannot offer a helping hand. This is such a bad thing to have in practice like what if one of the girls starts to get a seizure or is choking and needs immediate Heimlich maneuver? A very harmful environment has been created for male teachers and schools. When I worked at a preschool, we always very strictly followed the rule of three. There were always at least three people, ideally two adults, but even another kid in a situation like above, in any room. This was for male and female teachers. A woman with her kids is taking care a man with his kids is babysitting. I went to the bank with my kids once and I got hit with being Mr. Mom. I am their primary caregiver. I get hit with that crap when I take my kids to the physician. I didn't bring a pacifier when my infant got a shot. He didn't need one anyway. And the nurse says don't worry. I won't tell your wife. I snapped back and said I'm the one who made the damn appointment. My dad got this bullshit lot too. He was a single father. Take my daughter to Peter Piper for Shtai Pizza Buffet and arcade games that aren't $4 per play and I'll be damned if someone would make a comment about it being daddy's day with a kid. Then I started saying yeah. Someone had to do it when my wife died. And bask in the paradigm shift. I'm tired of this. I was in a beating and my husband was taking care of our 3 year old. While I finished up. Then I cooked. Cleaned up. Fed the child and went back into a meeting. My colleagues were like such a hands-on father. It took all of my patience and I just went. You mean looking after his child? That shut them up. My husband is very hands-on. He helps around the house, in the kitchen and with our child. I'm lucky compared to the other women who are from where I am. But that doesn't mean my husband is doing something beneath him. He's being a father, a partner. He's showing our child that we are all one in the house. Abusive behavior is funny when coming from a woman. I pointed out to my husband that in movies and TV shows, 
women get upset by a man's actions and slap him and no one bats an eye. I'm an older woman who grew up with a violent mother and I know firsthand the scars that remain from those acts of abuse. Over the years I've heard too many horror stories from male friends and in forums where they describe horrific physical, verbal, and emotional abuse from their female partners. Showing a woman hitting a man normalizes this cruelty and it needs to stop. Spot on. As a man who had previously been pushed around and punched in one instance, let alone the constant psychological and emotional abuse throughout the entire relationship, before leaving an ex many years ago, it was treated as a complete joke by both the police and most friends people I knew. The policeman laughed at me and said mate, that doesn't sound right women don't do that sort of thing and most other people I know just had a laugh about it, not taking it seriously whatsoever. I wasn't in any real danger as I'm a strong person who is physically capable of defending themselves. But that is irrelevant, would it have been the same story if I had been cracked in the jaw and pushed around by a bloke? If I was a woman, you be the judge. I know so are many men that are victims of female abuse and can't don't say anything BC society doesn't permit it. It's a human issue that transcends gender, race, religion, culture, etc. It's not okay. I was one of them. Especially not fun knowing that if I ever tried to defend myself, I'd most likely be the one going to jail, not her. Benefiting from somebody performing a service while shitting on individuals who perform said service. Thinking of sex work and minimum wage labor. Why do men get pockets big enough to hold all their shit women get fake pockets sewn shut or a refined micro pocket? Is it too much to ask that I don't have to carry around a satchel like a peasant? My wife has me carry her stuff. I'm like a walking handbag. Ah uh, yes. The man bag I'm single so don't have that glorious upgrade available sadly. How you can't have your opinion but someone else can have theirs. When did it become acceptable to threaten someone with violence or death when a differing opinion came into play? Rich people can abuse the system and no one bats nada deck large companies with taxes etc. But when poor people do the same they are met with absolute hellfire from those above them. When the penalty for breaking a law is a fine. That law is meant for poor people. Set limit fines sure. This is why we should have it based on percentage of wealth. That men can't be R-ed or physically mentally abused. That effing Josh Harnett movie. He gets R-ed by his ex and has to apologize to his girlfriend for being R-ed. Clothes from the women's section fall apart after 6 months. Meanwhile I have a 15 year old shirt from the men's section that I still wear. Playing video games is a waste of time. Unproductive and you should be ashamed of doing that in your free time if you're older than 18. In fact you're immature if you do. But reading a book, watching TV Netflix, going to bar club etc, is completely fine and encouraged for all ages, well except bars and clubs. Why the hell do people despise video games specifically with such a passion? You're playing games when you could be something productive bullsh. You wouldn't say that to someone doing anything that I specified above during their free time. But you would to someone playing games, regardless if they actually were productive during the rest of the day or not. I think double standards are harmful to everyone. A father is no less a parent than a mother. A woman is no more a hoe for casual sex than a man is. Having opinions on styles. Was at a bar with some friends and the girls were making fun of this guy's hair. Then a girl came in with a buzzed side of the head thing and I commented that I wasn't a fan of that style and they got super defensive for her and telling me she can do whatever she wants and I can go f myself. Pedophile teachers. When it's a man. You tend to see male teacher are ed student, and when they are women it's normally female teacher had sex with student. I despise the downplaying of it when the teacher is a woman. And seeing comments like that kid should be lucky, his teacher is hot disgusts me. It's not just the headlines, either. Female offenders typically receive much lighter sentencing in the court system as well. The male female discrepancy in the justice system is a huge one. The fact that black people get longer sentences for the exact same crime is, rightly, used to show how much bias there is against black people, but use the exact same evidence to show the much greater discrepancy against men, and people hand wave it away. If a woman sleeps with hundreds of men, she's a slut, but if I do it, I'm gay. I care nobody calls you a chef if you cook a meal but suck a dick suddenly you're gay. It being more acceptable for a man to not be in a child's life or take care of the child as much as the female. Know a lot of gaming knowledge and lore? OMG. 
What a geek. Know every member of every Super Bowl and World Series winning team? What a cool guy. Making fun of men in comedy movies. Every father has half the Ike of his wife. I especially notice that in commercials. Every single commercial the guy is wrong or an idiot. There was even one where a dad orders takeout but suddenly can't pay for it so his 7 year old daughter steps up and pays for and it rolls her eyes at him. Congressional pensions are made available, vested, after 5 years of service. Congressmen can retire at 62. That being said a person can be elected to congress at 57 and can retire at 62 with a full pension. What other organization offers such a benefit? Watching people play video games is weird, but watching people commentating on sports normal. Women rarely get complimented for the things men get complimented for. Assertiveness, accomplishments, basically any intentional act, they'll be passed on as by, triggered and overachieving. The compliments women get are compliments men rarely get. Being told that certain character reatics about their personality makes other feel good. Appearance compliments. This is absolute fuel for who has it worse. I know, but there is no lying in that both sides are receiving an imbalance in the kinds of recognition they wish they'd get. If I'm in a movie and I ask for beer, I get one. If I order a beer in real life, the bartender will condescendingly ask which one. I'm a bartender. The only folks who ever ordered just a beer were my regulars and I knew what they drink. With the exception of some guy I never saw before I handed him a cause light and he complained it wasn't what he wanted. I said next time he should specify or he'll keep getting the closest thing to hand when I open the fridge.